talk about last night. Uh, last night, Republicans statewide in Virginia, Kentucky, even Mississippi, Ohio, they didn't do great. In Mississippi, Tate Reeves ran for re-election and he won. But in Virginia, the Democrats picked back up the House of Representatives, their, their state house there, and they held the Senate despite a really, really good campaign by the Republicans. In Ohio, they lost the uh, abortion amendment. In Kentucky, they won statewide except the governor's race. It's way more complicated than saying this is all about Trump. Uh, one, abortion mattered in Ohio, and the pro-life community kind of fell apart there when it came to this amendment actually allows trans surgeries of minor without parental consent, and they didn't focus on that. They focused on the abortion side of it. It was a tactical error. They also got outspent dramatically in Ohio, and the pro-life donors who used to step up and fund haven't been funding ever since. In Virginia, the shift was not huge, actually. In the state house, Republicans held it by two, and now they've lost it by two after redistricting. So it wasn't that dramatic of a shift. Uh, Democrats did turn out. In college towns, young voters turned out, and in suburbia, women turned out. Part of that was abortion. Even though the Republicans probably found the sweet spot of a 15-week abortion ban, the problem is in the swing seats in portions of Virginia, Republicans needed to win. The Democrats did a really good job of saying the Republicans were all Trump-style candidates and would bring Trump-style Republicanism to Virginia. And those attacks worked. The Republicans were outspent in Virginia overall. Uh, I thought they were at parity, but actually this morning, multiple reports say they were outspent dramatically. And so Democrats were able to amplify those concerns. Now, Yes, so Trump hurt Republicans in suburbia there, but then consider Mississippi. Like Jeff Landry in Louisiana, being tied to Donald Trump helped Tate Reeves stave off a really tough challenge. Reeves was not a popular politician. He did not run a good campaign for governor. Democrats really thought they had him. He wrapped himself in the Trump flag, and that actually helped Tate Reeves get out of having to have a runoff. But contrast that with Kentucky, where Daniel Cameron wrapped himself in the Trump banner, and the other statewide Republicans did not. Cameron lost to the suburbs of Kentucky. He did fine in rural Kentucky, although I personally think there were probably some people, when you look at the divide there, who didn't support him because of his race, frankly. But at the same time, suburban voters there just flat out refused to support Don, uh, Donald Trump-style candidates. So the guy who got the biggest turnout for the GOP was a Republican Secretary of State candidate who was adamant the 2020 election was not stolen, and that helped him in suburbia. So the moral of the story here is that Donald Trump helped some candidates in some states do well, but in suburban areas of the country, Donald Trump doesn't. The problem for that and for Republicans is that you have to win a cross-section of these states in the Electoral College. It's why the Electoral College matters. So at the presidential race, this may cost Donald Trump Georgia because suburban Republican voters don't like Donald Trump. But in Michigan, where there's a huge percentage of working class voters and Joe Biden now has problems with Muslim voters because of what's happening in Israel, that may help Donald Trump in Michigan. It may help him in a place like Erie, Pennsylvania, but also cost him the suburbs of, of Philadelphia and Bucks County. It may help Donald Trump in the Youngstown, Ohio area, but may hurt him actually in the Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio suburbs where he'll probably still win, but closer than expected. Donald Trump is extremely divisive and that's part of the problem here. So this isn't all about Donald Trump. He's actually helpful in portions of the country, but there are portions of the country where he doesn't help. And you add into that the abortion layer and Donald Trump motivates Democratic voters and abortion motivates Democratic voters. So in suburban purplish states that lean blue, Donald Trump is anathema. In purplish states that lean red, Donald Trump can help. So how do you put that field together with the Electoral College? It becomes, I think, very difficult. Um, and I think Republicans will have to get through this. If you hear anyone say it's all about Donald Trump, that's not true. That's not true. Abortion was a big issue. Candidates were a huge issue. But Trump does help Republicans in portions of the country, and he does hurt. The problem with Daniel Cameron, for example, 
is that Daniel Cameron ran as Donald Trump's guy. He didn't run as Daniel Cameron, the attorney general, who was going to make Kentucky safe. He certainly had a crime message, but he spent a lot of time motivating voters, being endorsed by Donald Trump, making sure people knew he was endorsed by Donald Trump, wrapping Trump's flag around him, attacking Ron DeSantis for not being sufficiently deferential to Donald Trump. That helped him get out Republicans, but it didn't help him in the suburbs who wanted to know who was Daniel Cameron. At the end of the day, that's not Donald Trump's fault. That's Daniel Cameron's fault. Daniel Cameron didn't make that message for himself. In Virginia, Republicans did a very good job. I mean, just consider, they, they went from 51-49 or 52-48 in the state house to 51-49 to the Democrats after redistricting. That's actually good. And in the Senate, it didn't shift dramatically there either. So they largely held their own. But in suburban Northern Virginia areas, abortion and attacking candidates as MAGA and too radical and anti-democracy, the combination of those two mattered and Republicans were outspent. The larger issue here is not Donald Trump. Frankly, it's the coalition that moves with Donald Trump. They support Donald Trump. They support Donald Trump's candidates, but they don't have the money and resources that the suburban white voters who've shifted to the Democrats have. They give to Donald Trump. They don't give to other candidates. That actually matters. They're also not regular, reliable voters. The suburban soccer mom turns out Donald Trump's candidate or Donald Trump's voters turn out when Donald Trump is on the ballot. So you've got to build yourself up as a candidate for who you yourself are and not just rely on Trump because his Machine comes out for him, not for anyone else. To the extent there's a Trump issue there, that's on his voters, not on Donald Trump. Trump himself can turn out his base for himself, and that changes the dynamic in 2024. Those people may stay home in 2024 if Donald Trump's not the nominee. At the same time, the other Republicans may be able to reformulate the Republican coalition and bring back the suburbs that won't go to Trump. The only way this is going to be sorted is in 2024, and we'll see. If Donald Trump loses, though, his supporters will say it's stolen. If he wins, well, we know the bulk of the Republican Party gets motivated by Donald Trump, just no other candidates tied to Trump, and then that will hurt them in the midterms. Either way, you got to get through 2024, but don't listen to people who say it's all about Donald Trump. It's all about Donald Trump. It's really not. Tate Reeves and Daniel Cameron didn't run fantastic races. In Virginia, they ran fantastic races, but yeah, Donald Trump hurt them in the suburbs, as did the abortion issue. It's a little more multifaceted than just one single issue.